Hey guys, and welcome to the first episode of We Sold Everything. I've decided that I want to start making these um, vlogs every other week just so that I can document sort of the experience of just selling all our things and going to travel. And a lot of you seem to be interested in that. So I'm going to start doing these uh, bi-weekly as well as my regular videos on Wednesdays and Sundays. There's not a lot of updates since the video where we announced what we were going to do. Um, these are two, two boxes of things that I mentioned in my video. This one's just like, whenever we have something we need to sort out, we sort of toss it in here. Um, and then these are the two boxes. This is the box that's filled with like more sentimental type of things that we want to keep. Yeah, I'm not going to go into detail because I would bore you guys. And this one's just like kitchen fragile stuff. And um, these are the only two boxes. And then right here is so far the things we're going to be bringing in the car with us. So these are mostly clothes. This is my YouTube gear. So those are my light boxes and my tripods. That's Benji's bed. This is the little setup. It's a mess, but this is like my little setup um, for working right now. A lot of you have actually been asking like what I've been doing to sell things on Marketplace because um, a lot of you had said that like you find it pretty hard to sell things on Marketplace. But what I do is I package things in batches. So instead of trying to sell like a bunch of random little things, I will have them in batches. So for example, this is when I just sold um, and I've been packaging them in these like little reusable um, bags because I have these from the grocery store. This is what I called a baking set on um, Facebook Marketplace. And it has everything from like a little silicone spatula to, I don't know if you can see that, but they're like little cupcake molds and a little cake mold and everything like that. So I sold this for, I think, 10 euros. Um, this batch here, I made a little box filled with little jars that I had used. Um, these are Ikea and I was using these for spices. And then I sold this box of stuff for seven euros. These little ones are actually three euros at Ikea, the set of them. Um, and then these were given to me for free by a neighbor. I kept like spaghetti and stuff in them. So seven years is actually a profit for me on this because I didn't buy it. And then because I'm trying to get rid of as much stuff as I can, I decided to throw in these glass markers because I had written on the jars uh, what they had inside. So like pasta, cereal, whatever. And I was about to throw these out, but instead of throwing them out, I'm just like adding them in here. And then the person who buys these, um, can write on their jars. So it's just like a little extra. Everything's starting to look pretty empty up here, except for some boxes. So I hope that you guys don't mind the quality. I'm actually filming all of these vlogs on my phone, at least while we're doing the move so that um, during the road trip, I'm bringing my DSLR camera with me on the airplane um, and leaving it in Portugal because the idea is that during the road trip, we don't want to have a lot of valuables on us. We're going to be mostly just bringing clothes in the car with us. And this way, I mean, if they get stolen, like it won't be the end of the world. But my dog is just watching me and judging me while I talk to an inanimate object. How I I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about how I sold my things on Facebook because I saw a lot of you asking like how did I manage to make a lot of money I'm going to give you guys some tips whether or not you're going to be able to sell things um, is completely dependent on how well you sort of market them um, even though it is like a secondhand marketplace people are only gonna click on your ad if they're interested in it like one of the first things I'd recommend is you take an awesome picture of whatever you're trying to sell try to find the best lighting that you can um, if you want to add like a slight filter filter on it you can so long as it doesn't change dramatically the color of the actual object because then it's kind of like false advertisement and this is his paw my second tip is include as much in the description as you possibly can so if there's any dents if there's any marks like be super open and honest people much rather know exactly what they're getting themselves into especially because they know that secondhand things aren't going to be in brand new condition then find out when they've like taken the time to drive all the way to your house and my third piece of advice is to try to be as friendly as possible like when someone was buying my Brita filter um, a couple days ago, I told them like, hey, by the way, instead of using like the official filters, there's like the store nearby that sells like unofficial filters and they work just as well. It made him even more likely to buy from me. So expect people to bargain with you. 
Um, you probably would try to bargain if you were buying something secondhand and set the price somewhere where it's going to be negotiable. So for example, I'm selling my washing machine right now and I put the price up for 200 euros, but I decided that I was willing to let it go for a hundred. Now, if I'd put the price up for a hundred, people would try to negotiate with me and I'd have to probably go down to like 90 or 80. But because I put it at 200 and people are negotiating with me, there's someone who's coming to see it for 130 and they think they're getting a great deal and I'm still getting 30 euros more than I wanted for this machine because I also bought my machine secondhand. I also wanted to show you guys my setup for the airplane. So I'm bringing my doggo. <laughs> this is going in the hold. It's just like this Quechua backpack and it has like I think most of our summer clothes and a couple of other random things. And then this is the bag that's coming with me in the carry-on. And this has my clothes for the next couple of weeks. This is my trusty backpack. If you guys want to check out the same backpack or just Nordis in general, I'm going to leave a link down below. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I take my Nordis backpacks with me everywhere. The reason I'm taking this one and not my usual beige one, which I will also link down below, is because I want to use these compartments to store Benji's things. So for example, this is his passport um, and it's super easy to access it. I have his treats and a little water bottle for him. And then I love that it also has a little water bottle pouch here for me so I could close it up, but I can also like put it back in the backpack if I'm not using it. And then it attaches to my bag, which obviously is super handy given the fact that I'm going to have this giant backpack on my back. So I need somewhere else to carry this. Probably shouldn't be telling you this, but it has a little secret um, pouch here. And that's where I keep my passport. And then I'll just have it like really close to my back so that I know that no one can reach into my passport. Benji's crate is coming too. That's this giant thing. And I genuinely don't know how I'm going to do this. I have traveled before with Benji, the Quechua bag and a backpack, but I've never done it with a carry-on as well. When I arrive, I have to pick up two things. I have to pick up Benji, um, who gets delivered in like the special baggage zone. And I have to pick up the bag that's in the hold. And this is why I was considering not bringing a bag in the hold this time, because the last time I did this, it was a sweet disaster. I have to essentially take Benji's um, crate first, obviously, because I want to pick him up first, and then hope that no one snatched my bag from the other carousel because Benji takes about like 30 minutes to get delivered to me. He gets delivered. I have to take him out of his crate. I have to cut him loose because I sort of attach him with these little tags um, so that his crate doesn't spontaneously open while they're like in transit with him. <laughs> and then I have to give him some love, give him some water and some snacks and just like let him know that everything's fine. Then I have to put him back in the crate, put that on the trolley, take that to the carousel where the bags get delivered, get my whole bag, all while carrying my backpack and my carry-on. So this is one, preparing me for motherhood because I'm sure that this is going to be very similar to that but just with baby strollers. And two, spiking my anxiety. <laughs> yeah, that's all I have for right now. Um, let's see what happens next. <laughs> Portugal. We had a great flight, we being me and Benji. I got to the airport with Benji. There was no one there and I just checked and everything. Usually I have to go to the check-in desk just for them to check Benji's documents and everything like that. And then I like to walk around with Benji for a while before I have to give him in just so he's not alone for too long. For those of you who don't know, Benji travels in his crate. It's the same place he sleeps every night and he goes in the hold of the airplane. I don't want to go too much into detail about that because that's just something I've researched very carefully and it's what works best for us. 
but he doesn't mind it and he always looks fine when I pick him up. So don't worry too much about him. We love him with all our hearts. We would never do anything that would be bad for him. I walked around with him for about 30 minutes. He peed in the airport floor and he pooped on the airport floor. And we got on the plane. I just like read my Kindle the whole time and it went by pretty fast. There was no one on my row with me. Um, not really anyone in the rows below, behind me or in front of me, so I felt pretty safe. Everyone was wearing their masks and everything like that. And then my mom picked us up and we got home and he was super happy to see his grandparents. And for the past couple of days, I've just been working and sort of getting the room ready for us to move in. This is my room. I actually remodeled this room recently. If you guys want to see that video, I'm going to leave a link down below. Today I actually fly back and I have to quarantine and do a COVID test, which I'm fine with. Like I'm all up for like keeping everyone safe and I work from home anyway. So I just accepted that when I decided to go on this trip to bring Benji here. So tonight at around like 10 p.m. is when I land like 10.30 and then at around like 11.30 p.m. I'm going to be taking this COVID test. Um, then we're going to be going home and I'm just going to be quarantined for seven days at home. My boyfriend's also working from home and yeah, then I'm going to just get my second test on the seventh day and that is the point at which we start our road trip back down to Portugal. I'm not excited at all. I have not done one yet so far and I have no idea how it's gonna feel. Um, if I'm able to film it, I will, but I probably won't be able to, so we'll see. So I'm back at home and I was able to ask the super nice uh, nurse who did my test if I could film it so that you guys could see it. So I'm going to insert the clip right here, but this is just so you guys can see that it's completely harmless. It's so easy, it takes like, 15 seconds maybe in total they just put the little swab in your nose and then they have to twist it three times and the only thing you really feel is a little stick going up your nose but it isn't like painful or anything it's just the stick going up your nose <laughs> now i have it registered on the app that we have here in belgium and my test will automatically the result will automatically get added to the app if I do have anything, then anonymously, everyone who's been around me or in contact with me recently will get an alert that they might be um, infected. And if nothing's wrong, then the app just won't get updated. But um, yeah. <laughs>